When I arrived home, Christopher shocked me with a divorce proposal. I couldn't bring myself to forgive him, even though I was always there for him. I answered coolly, keeping my sentiments to myself, but I was determined to make him regret it. I'm not pleased with you, so let's get a divorce. I'll give the child to you in exchange for $800,000. His flippant remark shocked me, but it was too late. He would now have to live with the results of his deeds. I'm a 25-year-old hotel receptionist by the name of Anna. I got married to Christopher, my supervisor at work, last year. I quit my work and found out I was pregnant at the beginning of this year. I was congratulated by everyone as I left my cozy office. I've devoted my time to cleaning and taking care of our newborn baby ever since. Christopher was helpful during our chaotic first year of parenthood, despite our son's nighttime crying and difficulty consuming milk. But lately, Christopher's actions have unexpectedly shifted. When it came to cleaning and childcare, he used to be proactive, but lately, something didn't seem right. He would regularly talk about social gatherings at work and would frequently get home late saying he didn't need meals. If he had been away on business, I might understand. But his regular absences were odd. It was a new trend that he was going to drinking parties after work. Christopher had never acted in this way, not even after we had our kid. Christopher appeared abnormally sober when he returned home from a drinking party one evening in an unexpectedly upbeat mood. Welcome back, I responded. I've prepared a bath for you. I said, You usually can't handle alcohol, but you seem fine today, observing his improved behavior. My remark seemed to have upset Christopher. Not the smell of booze, but the whiff of women's perfume hit me as I walked up to him. I noted Christopher and commented, Usually, you come home and have a drink with appetizers. The sales manager wasn't seated next to me today. Thus, give up worrying about anything. Just pay attention to housekeeping. People who lie frequently display their dishonesty in little ways, such as speaking more rapidly or using derogatory words. It seemed reasonable to me that Christopher was hiding something because of his harsh demeanor and his contemptuous remarks. His increasing participation at drinking parties and his frequent late-night returns were strange and frightening. Christopher came home extremely late one morning and headed for work without sleeping. In addition, I discovered that he left his phone on the couch. I was taken aback when Christopher returned for it since I wasn't sure whether to give it back to him. He grabbed his phone away with a disgusted expression when he saw me holding it. Why are you touching my phone without permission? He asked. I just found it and was deciding whether to return it, I retorted. I avoided looking inside. My intuition that he had something on his phone that he didn't want me to view was verified by his furious response. I was aware that this could be the right time to confront him, but doing so now might cause the evidence about the other lady to be removed. I refrained from doing so, keeping my cool. I tried not to cry. I wouldn't stoop to such a despicable act. Christopher was trying to scare me, so he used a hard tone. He slammed his suitcase against the desk and started cursing, trying to show that he was in charge. I could have gone straight immediately if I had been alone, but I had to exercise caution because of our son. For now, I would put up with it and try to find out what Christopher had done wrong. I clenched my hands, trying not to get too angry. Our son woke up and started calling out for me from the other room, sensing my sorrow. His sobs mirrored my own agony and anguish. Shut him up already? Christopher startled me with his enraged yelling, and I recoiled at the sight of his clenched fist and combative posture. When did our relationship start to fall apart this much? This kind of problem was unheard of when we first married. Upon closer inspection, maybe I was just oblivious to the warnings. Since the beginning of our marriage, Christopher's actions have always shown a certain aspect of himself. He had high standards for me. I had to do all the washing up, including scrubbing pots, and clean up after every bathroom visit. I also had to make sure that the dishes were never piled up. 
It was my duty to clean the shoes whenever they were soiled. After we had our child, the quantity of housekeeping grew dramatically and eventually became unbearable. Christopher, who had been helpful at first, had now stopped. I frequently thought that I was cleaning the home more than a maid. My ideas of divorcing and moving out with our son grew stronger as I approached my breaking point. Then something changed. After I had just put our kid to sleep one evening, perhaps one month into my study into Christopher's conduct, Christopher showed me a picture. It was a picture of him having a fun-filled day with friends from my previous employment. What are you doing leisurely outside while I'm at work? He asked. I was simply unwinding with some tea after doing the cleaning. What's the issue with that? I replied. Christopher said I was squandering family money since he didn't understand what I was doing. He didn't listen to my side and began to yell. The tension in the home increased as our son, who was meant to be sleeping, started to wail loudly. Stop talking! Put an end to that dreadful sobbing! Christopher attempted to scream at my kid who was sobbing in the other room. I forcefully blocked my son's path in front of the entrance, determined to safeguard him. I was determined not to let him go, so I stared at him. Quit being in the way. No, I'm not moving, I answered. Are you aware of the task at hand? You're screaming in front of a baby. That seems crazy, doesn't it? These recent incidents seem to have awakened my eyes. I understood that staying with Christopher would not lead to a happy future for either of us. I wanted to get out right now. All I needed to do was find a job and save up some cash because I had enough proof to leave at this point. I needed to hunt for employment covertly so Christopher wouldn't find out since I knew I couldn't raise my baby alone just yet. While I was thinking this, Christopher aggressively opened the door, pushed me away, and talked in a chilly manner. Leave. I don't need a lady who can't respect her husband. Now pack up your belongings and get out. What are you saying? I objected. Don't say something irrational. Just leave, Christopher angrily said. You look awful. You have no right to respond after taking my money and spending it any way you choose. You are no longer useful to me. Grab the child and leave. Before shoving us out, Christopher yelled obscenities at me, aggressively shoved our son who was wailing, and took my possessions. We were left abandoned on the streets in the quiet back alley late at night when he shut and latched the door behind us. All that could be heard above the silence was my son's crying. I said, I'm so sorry, to him. I sincerely apologize for my shortcomings as a parent. I apologize for this difficulty. I ran into a neighboring park, clutching my son close to keep him warm so that I wouldn't be observed by the people. I apologized repeatedly and promised to keep him safe at all costs. I was going to get aid at the city hall or somewhere else when the light came up. It started to rain just when I thought things couldn't get much worse. I tried to protect my kid from the rain by holding him closely without using an umbrella or anything else. And as the raindrops fell, so did my tears. None of this would have occurred if I had been stronger, severed my relationship with Christopher sooner, and divorced him before this child was born. I felt stuck and helpless, with a heavy burden of regret and hopelessness weighing me down. What took place? At this hour, what are you doing here? A voice pierced my suffering. Even though it was after three in the morning, a smart-looking old man came up to us and offered his umbrella to protect my kid and me from the rain. The opulent home in front of the park must have belonged to the unidentified old guy. He had come outside to see how we were doing, perhaps scared off by my kid's incessant crying. Even though it made me uneasy to be approached by a stranger at this hour, there was something about him that made me feel nostalgic. He covered my head with a towel and wiped my hair softly as I told him about my terrible experiences. Please come to my home, he replied politely. You can be looked after by female servants, for the infant staying the night here would be too sad. I started crying nonstop at his kind words and understanding attitude. I chose to accept his offer and, with my crying son, I stepped into the house. I was about to discover a startling reality inside the elderly man's home. 
I was able to get a good night's sleep for the first time in a long time because of the attentive and loving attention the servants gave my son. My phone had been ringing non-stop, a female servant told me when I woke up before midday. They had shown care for my sleep by not waking me. Thankful for their generosity, I looked up my phone history and saw many messages from Christopher. Presumably unable to handle breakfast on his own, he was calling for me to come back right away. His behavior demonstrated his uselessness, and I regret ever having dealt with him. I didn't want to go back, but I knew that ignoring him and maybe calling the cops would make things worse. I decided to take matters into my own hands, so I picked up my son and left. After I got back, Christopher and I started fighting like crazy. Until now, where the hell have you been? Christopher yelled, clearly angry. There is a mess in the house, no breakfast prepared. You obstinately remained out until morning after such a pointless fight last night. What on earth have you been up to, you moron? Despite my wanting to respond, I'm right here, aren't I? My tongue was a bit. I bit back my sarcasm and held my tongue when I said that the home had been shut against me and that there was no way I could have known about the absence of breakfast. If he felt bad about not being able to make breakfast for himself, he ought to have thought about the repercussions of his behavior that got me sent out. He'd made fun of me a lot, but if he really was as intelligent as he said, he would have handled things differently. I pointed out the absurdity of his circumstance rather than allowing his comments to get to me. His temples jerked with clear irritation. I have had enough of this. I'm not able to continue with you, he said. Christopher abruptly grabbed a piece of paper from his room and banged it onto the table in the living room. It was a divorce decree, with his signature and seal. He undoubtedly assumed that when I saw it, I would freak out and ask him to change his mind. I, however, was not going to provide him that satisfaction. Taking my seal and a ballpoint pen from a neighboring shelf, I signed the form without thinking twice. Christopher raised an eyebrow in astonishment. He scoffed. Aren't you unusually obedient, even if you don't have a job, parents, or anywhere to go? Ha ha ha. How will you proceed? His uneasiness did not equal his swagger. I saw the twitching at the corner of his mouth and the cold perspiration that was starting to build on his forehead. I hated him inwardly and his cunning methods. I hurriedly grabbed the last of my possessions, ignoring his insults. Still seeming to be unconcerned, Christopher struck his last strike. Being in your presence deprives me. Let's get a divorce. If you pay me $800,000, i will give you the child. It was obvious that Christopher was trying to use money to control me and get me to react. In an attempt to subjugate and control me, he was attempting to shake me and take advantage of my feelings. Christopher's attempts to put further limitations on me and carry on with his carefree way of life while I was struggling just strengthened my determination. I turned back with a knowing look on my face and said, is that all you wanted to say? By the end of the month, I will transfer the eight million. Kindly take care of the formalities thereafter. Farewell. When I answered calmly and affirmatively, Christopher's face went pale and confused. He digested my offer with obvious amazement. He may bluster about how impossible it would be to raise such money, but I was not going to let him rule me anymore. After the divorce was finalized, I sent him the sizable sum he had requested. I had proof of his affair, but I wanted more than money back. I wanted to make sure he was held accountable for much more. After two weeks, when I woke up, my phone was full of urgent calls from Christopher. Now was the time for reckoning. Christopher phoned me back, but at first I didn't pick up. Upon answering the second call, I hung up right away. I intended to make him feel uneasy and upset his equilibrium. I knew that if I responded right away, he would remain composed and the discussion would go just how he wanted. I let him become angry on purpose, keeping him tense so he would lose his cool. My plan was bearing fruit. 
and I felt good about myself and like I was in charge of the circumstances. It was only when Christopher phoned back that I answered. I responded, taking a drink of my coffee and leafing through a magazine. You're as noisy as ever. Even if you're yelling, I can still hear you since I can change the sound level on my phone. What are your desires? You know, I'm really busy. I'm raising my son and having a nice holiday right now. My calm and easy conversation shows that I'm so happy right now that I think my exchanges with Christopher were a waste of time. You succeeded, didn't you? How did you get here? Over the phone, Christopher's voice broke with frustration and despair. What are you discussing? I answered calmly. I haven't taken any action. Christopher's passionate reaction just reinforced my presumptions. The truth was, I had stolen everything from him, including his family, his work, his money, and his wife. I had torn everything from him. No, only you have the ability to accomplish this. You liar! Give me everything back! He was screaming and crying in a really dramatic way, and I was laughing so hard inside. Would you mind telling me what I did? I pretended not to know. I seem to have forgotten a lot lately. I proceeded to sip my coffee and thumb through a magazine while maintaining a barely heard voice. Christopher got married again, not long after our split. The lady with whom he had an affair during our marriage was now his wife. She was the daughter of the president of a significant firm. Christopher had kept his first marriage a secret from her, and she became enraged upon learning about our kid. She was pregnant the day he proposed our divorce. Given that her father was a crucial collaborator on the largest deal among his clientele, Christopher had to tie the knot as soon as possible. In order for him to swiftly remarry her, he put pressure on me to complete the divorce. However, this was only the start of his demise. Christopher was booted out of his house and got divorced today by his new wife. His prior marriage was made public, and when our child's identity was revealed, she demanded a divorce and monetary damages. His in-laws had to step in because of his increasingly disruptive conduct and furious outbursts. He was let go from the hotel when the issue got out of hand, to the point that his employer was informed. The business selected the client over him. He lost his job along with his wife. Furthermore, Christopher was left financially devastated since he had to pay damages and compensation for all the $8 million that he had gotten from me. He had to spend all of his funds because the sum was not enough to offset the losses. Why is she aware of my prior marriage? Christopher was obviously desperate. You are the only one who could have accomplished this. You have stolen my joy. I shut the magazine and made the decision to speak with him. It enraged me that he had no regrets. All the same, he continued to deny that his circumstances were caused by his own acts. I firmly replied, Everything that happens is karma for your actions. You caused this to happen to you. I firmly stated, Cheating while you were with me, abusing your wife, getting divorced, and losing your job. All of these are the results of your own bad actions. How absurd is that? Do you dare to preach to me even if you are from a lower social class than me? You have to be in a position where you are unable to even support a child on your own. Isn't it the reason you lead such a hectic life? You had to be getting this as payback for leaving me. Christopher misunderstood to think that I worked from sunrise to sunset. Raising the magazine in front of me, I made fun of him behind my back. Do you refer to this as busy? I finished reading the beauty magazine that I had been occupied with up until now. I remarked cynically but elegantly. My plan is to sip on my second cup of tea and perhaps engage in some knitting. Is that busy? I could feel his fury. Are you still making fun of me on the phone? His face was practically red as an octopus after boiling, as I could almost see. I was laughing so hard I could not contain my delight, and it appeared to annoy him even more. He would not stop screaming. Yet I found his screams to be beautiful. How are you doing? There's no way to resolve this over the phone. He vowed. 
I'm coming to your house right now. You're welcome to come. But you'll be denied entry. I shot back. I'll tell the servants that you're an outsider and will not be let in at all. Servants? Yes, it is correct. I currently share a mansion with my father. I surprised him by showing him my father, the chairman of his workplace, and the old man who had assisted me during a video call. Hey, Christopher, is this our initial encounter? With composure, my father said. Christopher seemed noticeably shaken. Father, how does this signify? He stumbled. Though I couldn't see Christopher's face, I could imagine how confused he must be. Christopher's presumptions started to falter once he was informed that I didn't have a father. Actually, my mother and I were divorced when she was expecting me. The relationship between my mother and father went against what society expected. My mother was a regular citizen, while my father was the heir to a financial giant. The entire family was against my father's marriage to my mother, and my grandma did not support it. Dad had been abandoned, cut off from everyone, and no matter how hard he tried, he could never have the marriage sanctioned. After observing this, Mother suggested we split up, providing me with legal recognition with his approval. They did not permit the marriage, but they did give monthly child support because they did not want the conglomerate's reputation to be damaged. It has been a while since your mother died. I was told that she didn't exist in this world, even though I genuinely wanted to meet her. It would have been excessively harsh to inform a small child that her father was absent. Your mother requested me to take care of you when she died last year, and I have been keeping an eye on you from the shadows. He was actually astonished to find Anna standing outside the home, wet to the bone. Even though I knew you got married since I had heard about it at the firm, my father said. That day? Were you under the chairman's care? Yes, I answered. When the rain got to us, my father came to our aid. My father put his hand softly on my back and comforted me while I gave Christopher a menacing look. You did say I had no financial standing, correct? How unfortunate. My father's business is now in my ownership, and its entire asset worth is $13 billion. I'm not a closed-minded person who gets worked up over $8 million. That is the entire narrative. I wasn't alarmed by the enormous $8 million that day because my father had offered it to us after lending a hand. The woman in the picture is my acquaintance's daughter. I'll ask the other partner to file for immediate divorce after explaining the circumstances. They have to be kind individuals. I will get all of the money back for you so don't worry about it. Anna put our child and yourself first. He is the priceless heirloom your mother departed with. I promise not to let you feel sad. After hearing my father's comments, I immediately agreed to Christopher's divorce and sent the agreed-upon payment. We'd been playing with Christopher all along, and now at last he appeared to recognize how stupid he was. It's ridiculous that you believe you're intelligent. I snorted. He didn't say anything, looked cornered, and seemed dejected. Perhaps he just recognized that giving up was his only option. And so our bitter argument with him came to an end, and Christopher never bothered us again. After a few years, my kids started primary school. I lived a happy life at work and in private, surrounded by my father and my kid. We were also well-treated by the personnel, and I at last experienced the warmth of a family.